Welcome to the Bob Allen Cellcast, episode 312, Calorie Counting. Are all calories created equal? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. The last several weeks, we've been doing some podcasts on different programs that are offered at BioBalance Health. The primary fundamental responsibility of BioBalance Health is to do a medical assessment of whether or not you need hormone replacement, and if so, what hormones need to be replaced and in what degree or dimension. But to, to support the work of hormone replacement and its impact on your health, there are also other programs that are offered at BioBalance Health. One of those programs has to do with eating a healthy diet. And there are things that we now know about food that we need to talk to you about, that we want to talk to you about, uh, food consumption and caloric intake, and uh, with the goal being to complement what we do with hormone replacement and exercise programs so that as you age, you can be as healthy as you can possibly be. You can maintain your independence and your mobility and your ability to, to walk and run and, and take care of yourself for as long as humanly possible. And what we believe is that if you do these kinds of things that we recommend and that we offer as programs at BioBalance Health, that you will increase your longevity and you will increase the quality of life that you have as you live mm -hmm. longer. And, and that's our goal. That's our hope. So today we're going to talk about some information that comes from the August 2016 edition of the Endocrine News, which is a journal for endocrinologists. Mm -hmm. and, it, and we'll be talking about... Uh, primarily the concept that not all calories are equal, right. that a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. And one of the interesting things that this article discusses, for me at any rate as, mm -hmm. as a non-physician, is they actually admit that whether you have a low-fat diet, a low-carb diet, or a mixed diet of one kind or another, that in the long run, most diets don't make any difference. What makes a difference isn't the specific diet that you're on, but whether or not you're on it whether or not you follow it, whether mm -hmm. or not you practice what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. If you do those things, then they are helpful. Some of them have proponents and adherence for each kind because of side effects like diabetes mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, insulin resistance and insulin uh, capacity. But those are almost sidebar arguments to the, to the, the message that if you consciously and consistently follow a, quote, healthy diet, that's mm -hmm. planned for you, then it will work for you. That's right. And but I find that what works for each person right. is different. Well and that's the key. It's a that's very individual right. kind of thing. We look at to determine diets, what's going to be good for you. We look at the genetic background based on on uh, blood type. We look at that. But we also look at what foods make you feel good and what foods make you go to sleep in the afternoon. Right. I mean, many of these things are outcomes of eating the wrong food. So sometimes I just say to my patients, okay, mm -hmm. tell me exactly what you eat every every day. Just give me a sample of a day. And those who are having trouble with their weight often don't eat, which is until like 3 o'clock in the yes. afternoon, which means their metabolism really didn't start up. They're not burning calories as they should. You have to eat in the morning to get your metabolism going and, and start burning calories. Yeah. Or your body thinks it's it is starving, <laughs> yeah, it's and then time. Hey, yeah, it's winter time. Yeah. You're going to go hibernate, and it stops burning calories. Well, you know, years ago I used to talk about when I was teaching school uh, the, the number of people that I knew that went on diets, and their methodology for going on a diet is they get up in the morning and say, "Oh my God, I weigh too much. I'm going to go on a diet." So they don't <laughs> eat breakfast, they don't eat lunch, they go home, they eat a light dinner, they get on the scale, and they haven't lost a pound, and they say, "Damn it, diets don't work." And so then they, they <laughs> so then they gain eating. five more pounds that year. Yeah. Exactly. So, and, and the truth is, is, is if you haven't figured out your, your perfect food or your, or the diet that works for you and you need help, 
you may need to go to somebody who can right. help you figure out what foods you should eat and what you shouldn't eat mm -hmm. based on your medical history, based on your genetics, based on your lifestyle. So, so that's, it's important that you get outside help. What is also important is every fad diet that comes out, everybody comes in and goes, oh, have you read this diet? Well, you know, it doesn't really matter. Right. Fad diets are Which fad diets. Yeah. And they never work for everybody. And they never work very long. You have to determine the food that you should consume and what food is good for you. And then So you stay talk there. a lot about the Mediterranean diet and you mm -hmm. and you talk a lot about your genetic background. So mm -hmm. you do testing for genetic backgrounds mm -hmm. to see genetically what people are more prone to be able to tolerate or should avoid. Right. Is that correct? That am is I, correct. My understanding that, that is correct. But we also use blood type as a gross, meaning rough estimate of what you should eat okay. and the kind of exercise you should have. Like, for example, O, the most common blood type. O's should exercise every day. That's how they operate best. That's They're the one blood type that needs to run or go or mm. lift weights every day because that's required for them to stay at a healthy weight. But they also need meat. So if you're vegan or a vegetarian and you are not eating meat, you are missing something right, that your body needs. That your body really needs. And frankly, there's no way to get the amino acids that you need to make muscle because you break muscle down every day and you gain muscle every day if you work out and you have the building blocks for muscle. If you don't eat meat, you don't have the building blocks for muscle. And I'm hearing people all over the world going, <laughs> that's not true. But you can take a supplement that will give you those amino acids for your muscles, but you have to be consistent. You can't just just decide I'm, I'm going to eat as a meatless person or, a, God forbid, a, an eggless person because eggs are the perfect food and then expect to gain muscle. It isn't going to happen unless you take these supplements and it's complicated. You have to take the right supplements to build muscle. So the Endocrine News quotes a Dr. Randy Seeley. He's a professor of surgery at the University of Michigan School of mm -hmm. Medicine. And he says that the effects of some foods on metabolism are comparable to those of hormones. So it's true. It's, help me understand what he's saying. He, he's saying <clears throat> if I eat nuts or if I eat sugars, that the ingestion of that will work inside my body the same way the hormones that my body generates mm -hmm. work. So how, let's how, go to hormones. Hormones okay. are a liquid communicator. All right. So hormones generally work by stimulating a cell to do its job in a certain way. So okay. it goes to a cell it's, and it's it like a chemical trigger. turns it on. Turns it on, turns it off. Turns it off. When there's not enough of that hormone, it, it shuts down. So it's usually a stimulator, usually not an inhibitor, but there are some that are inhibitors of that cell. So it it's a communication. Mm -hmm. So foods, there are many foods that do the same thing. They stimulate your body or by, cell by cell to do something like sugars stimulate the production of insulin. Okay? okay. So it goes to your pancreas. You make a lot of insulin when you eat pure sugar mm -hmm. or um, carbohydrates that are very refined. They make a lot of insulin. So that's acting as, as a hormone. Okay. And then that insulin then trigger goes to the cell. And if you have too much, it makes you insulin resistant. So you can't make it into energy. So you store it as fat. So that's a complicated process. Right. And it's much more complicated than that. But I'm, I'm making it very simplistic. Right. If you eat nuts, nuts stimulate in your brain. It actually crosses the blood brain barrier okay. and it stimulates norepinephrine, which gives you energy, serotonin, which makes you happy. And in some people, dopamine which makes you feel satisfied. Okay. And and it's, dopamine is usually what is stimulated when you take drugs. And when you say if you eat nuts, are you talking about just raw nuts or are you talking about treated in some way? Because there are a lot of nuts that, that have a sugar coating or a salt coating. Mm, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about nuts. And usually raw is better, like cashews are better if they're raw mm -hmm. than if they're roasted. But okay. I'm not talking about salted anything because you can get a lot, way too much salt and it's not always the best kind of salt for you. Right. So it can make your blood pressure go up. So, so you it have needs to, to be sea salt. It needs to be sea salt, right. which hardly any nuts yeah, you have. You have to look at it to make sure. Yeah. Or it has to be like, I love raw cashews. Mm -hmm. 
They are very high in protein. They're, and the reason I think I love them is because they kind of make me feel happy mm -hmm. and satisfied. And it may, and they give me all those good feelings. So they're operating like hormones in your body. And Yeah, they're stimulating neurotransmitters in my brain. So that's a yeah. hormone. Yeah. So there's a lot of foods that, foods that do that. And most people, if they pay attention, can tell when they're eating a food that's good for them because mm -hmm. they aren't too tired. They don't crash after the meal. They feel energetic. They feel happy. They feel like they've done something good for themselves if they pay attention. So fish for lunch. Power lunch is fish and raw vegetables. And you can put nuts on fish. Nuts on fish, which is what I look for. And then any kind of vegetable fruit combination at lunch gives you energy till dinner. And it makes you... It gives you that feeling of having lots of energy and makes your brain work better. So you talk about fruit. T talk about the difference between glucose and fructose. They're kinds okay. of sugars, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I understand the difference. Many, many diets say that fruit and vegetables are act as carbs, mm -hmm. okay? But fruit, fruit sugar is called fructose, and it... And we're not talking about corn syrup. We're talking right. about fresh fruit is fructose. And that and some vegetables have have the um, sugar in them that is does not stimulate insulin to the extent that other carbs do like grains. Anything made from a grain or from a sugar cane or beets or honey, you know, like sugar beets mm -hmm. and honey, that stimulates insulin. Okay. But but the other the other fruits like carrots. There's no reason to limit carrots. Carrots aren't going to stimulate your insulin. They're not going to cause you to be hypoglycemic. They're not going to cause you to be insulin resistant. So you can eat as many carrots as you want and you can eat as much fruit as you want. My, my diet for weight loss for my patients is only count the carbs that are in grain or sugar. Don't count the carbs that are in fruit, fruit and vegetables okay. because they act differently. And that brings us to Another way, carbs at a meal that are from grains or sugar act, you, you, there's a specific number that they have found in studies, which is 25 grams of carb per meal. doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are. That is a magic number. If you go over that, if it's, and remember, not fruit and vegetables, this is just grains. If you go over that, then you are going to stimulate your insulin, overstimulate it. You're going to make too much insulin. So 25 grams from either carbs or sugar. So if you're going to have dessert carbs are or sugar. you're going to eat grains. At a meal. Right. So, Gra grains or sugar is what I mean. Yeah, grains yeah. or sugar. And so that means that if you're going to eat a piece of bread, that's 19, cal that's 19 grams. So you don't have very many more grams to eat at that meal. Right. So you can either have your piece of bread or you can have your... Yo uh, yogurt, sweetened yo yogurt dessert or mm. something that has a little bit of sugar in it. But as you get more refined, you get a smaller portion. Yeah. You know, so basically you can decide which one you want to eat, but you can eat anything else like meat, vegetables, cheeses, eggs, right. um, nuts. You don't have to count those. You just count the carbs. So and you, that you works. recommend the low carb diet? Yes, uh, I, or not even a, a diet per se, like a diet I, an eating plan, loss, like forever. Plan. Yes, and this you can stick by. Right, you don't because I mean, you don't have to deprive yourself. You're not depriving you yourself. You can fill your stomach. You can satiate your hunger. You can eat what you want to eat in terms of volume, without worrying about it. If you're monitoring your carbs, and th these are the people that I see generally are on the verge of having uh, getting type two diabetes. Yes. And many of them, they're looking for an answer that mm -hmm. actually makes them healthier. And if you think about one third of the American population has, di has type 2 diabetes, that means that those are the people I'm really speaking to right. when I'm talking about weight loss and a healthy lifestyle. Or, or they have metabolic syndrome, which is what they used to call prediabetes. Which has to do with you have, have insulin resistance in that as well, right. or fatty liver. Right. All of those things respond to this diet. And I have so many patients like that, that this is the first go-to that I do for, for patients. And I see all their lab and we adjust it to what their lab looks like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> high triglycerides, high blood sugar, that's, that's going to be diabetes if it isn't already. And they need that kind of diet. Mm -hmm. 
So, so this isn't about losing weight, but it is about achieving an ideal weight and staying there. Okay. And eating the proper things to give you a variety. Eating one thing might make you lose weight, but you're going to lose hair. Your hair's going to fall out. Your skin's going to look bad. You can't maintain a body on one food. Right. You need a balance. I would suggest that those diets don't do. <laughs> don't don't follow any kind of eating plan. Is that, that like says, the Atkins diet? No, Atkins was severe. And they did not allow you the fruit and vegetables. South Beach uh, allowed the fruit and vegetables. So it was better. But Atkins was worked for a lot of people. Right. But I, I have to say most of my patients that did that actually ate the fruit and vegetables too because they craved them. Well, it, it helped as far as immediate weight loss. <clears throat> Long right. term, it didn't help because of health issues and quality right. of life. But also, historically, what we know psychologically is that if you go on a diet if you eat a and, certain way. And deprive way. yourself. You eat a certain way for a certain period of time. As soon as you come off that diet, you not only put the weight back on that you lost, but you add weight because you're making up for stuff that you deprived yourself of. So, right. so if you're coming into bikini season and you think you need to lose 10 pounds and you starve yourself on some ridiculous diet to lose 10 pounds, if you're successful in doing that, which most people are not, mm -hmm. but if you are successful in that, when, when winter comes and it's sweater season, all that fat comes right on back. Yeah, all that does. weight comes right on back. When you lose weight in that way, in yes. a severe diet, a, a deprivation diet, when you lose weight that way, you lose muscle and fat. And when you gain it back, you just gain, gain fat. fat. Well, and we don't ever recommend a diet. We no. recommend an eating program. Uh, for, for Change the way you experience food. Change the way you plan for food. Change the way you consume food for a lifetime of habit. And admit. Not for a, a weight shift. Admit it's going to change how you feel. Yeah. I mean, changing what you eat, if you put one thing in your car, I mean, if I put, you know, premium, I'm going to be able to go faster, farther than if I put in regular. I mean, basically, you need to put in premium, which is the foods that are really good for you and avoid the foods that aren't, but you can still once in a while have that ice cream sure. or once in a while. I mean, there's nothing that says, you know, a cup and a half of ice cream is going to cause you to gain 10 pounds. It won't. Yeah. It is just, it's just So we just don't want to be the soup things. Nazi or the, or no, the I ice don't cream want, Nazi. Or and anymore. I don't want you think, to think that being healthy is de depriving yourself. Yeah. Being healthy is avoiding processed foods. Being healthy yes. to put in the right, put in the right um, fuel for your body so that you can be optimal. You can heal yourself. I mean, it's... Your food is doing all of those things inside your body. You better put the right stuff in. Right. And and stay away from corn syrup, corn syrup. in anything. Oh. And you just have to look at the ingredients. If yeah. if it's got corn syrup in it, just toss it. I mean, it is not it good is just not good for you. Yeah. It is toxic. It is. And and also be aware as there are emotional stresses in your life, uh, your defense mechanisms for food management change. A lot of people eat their stress, uh -huh. uh, they eat their worries, and they then that turns it's a self-defeating uh, cycle because then you put on weight or you get fatter, and then you're like, oh, my God, I'm more stressed, I'm more worried. Uh -huh. you know. So it's not as simple as going on a diet. That's uh, true. And it, some people come in and say, well, I'm going to go on pellets so I can lose 20 pounds. And I'm like, well, so let's talk about your diet. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I just want pellets so I can lose weight. Well, Yes, it'll speed your metabolism up, and yes, but it, it, it's going to make you feel better. So if that makes you go to the gym more, if that makes you able to resist bad food, good. But it doesn't make you just drop weight. Well, and there are psychological Without things that you can do. Right. It, you know, when you shop for groceries, shop for healthy groceries. I mean, if you buy bags of chips, if you buy Twinkies and sweets to put in the cabinet for when you have a craving or when you're suddenly hungry, then you'll eat crap. And, and if you buy cheese and fruit and sliced sausages or something where you can get some some uh, meat, uh, a cracker, some cheese, instead of something sugary or something prepared that's full of poisons, you'll do better. You know why the industry of food loves putting sugar into it? Why? They love it because it makes you hungrier. Yeah. So, like, so you if you eat, yeah, so if you, I mean, I remember this in 
when I was trying to manage weight in college, if I ate something in the morning that was carby, yeah. that had some sugar stuck in it somehow, yeah. then the rest of the day like I was frosted flakes, starving. Fortified with yeah, sugar. That's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, so the cereals are pretty much out except for um, steel cut oatmeal, but that doesn't have enough right. protein in it. So you basically, they're trying to feed us all this junk. We are re rebelling if we can get um, unaddicted to the sugars. So sometimes it's an addiction. Sugar so, sugar does make your dopamine go up. So are, can we shift gears for a yes. minute? Because there's something else in this article <laughs> that I want to mention. And I don't know anything about it. I don't know what you know. Mm -hmm. But it talks about EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals. And the article expresses a concern because <clears throat> there are thousands and thousands of chemicals that are being put in our food or being put in our food containers and utensils. Mm -hmm. Plastic, I, I think France uh, just passed a law saying you can't have plastic cups and glasses and, and foodware uh, mm -hmm. because of EDCs mm -hmm. and their concerns about them. That's right. And they're, uh, what they're saying is we don't even know down the road how those chemicals will affect our developmental metabolism. Mm -hmm. So for children in particular, it's a concern. And yet we all have Tupperware. We all have plastic. Yeah. Uh, we, we wrap things in plastic. Things come in plastic. Water bottles come in plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, what I've been educated about about those kind of things is whether or not they're recyclable mm -hmm. uh, but whether recyclable or not if you're ingesting them into your metabolic processes the endocrinologists are worried and say that it's a concern and they're in this article they're advocating for uh, what we call green chemistry they're advocating for chemists to work on uh, making products containers foodstuffs mm -hmm. and so on that don't have these EDCs in them is there more than that uh, that you want to say or that yeah. you know about? EDC, EDCs, um, in general, the ones they're really worried about from plastics act as estrogens. So we didn't, our parents, my parents' generation, probably all of yours grandparents' generation, right. didn't have these in our diet, in their diet. They had glass. Everything was in glass. You know, even baby bottles, you know, was glass. So they weren't exposed to these plastics we've developed since the 1960s. So now we have we have eaten out of it and then put it in the microwave, God right. forbid. Yes, that, yes, If both. you put it in the microwave, then all of the plastic EDCs go into your food. Yeah. So, I mean, if you have a choice, put it into glass before you heat it. Um, we put our milk in plastic containers. We put, right. I mean... So if you have a choice, find paper, waxed paper containers, well, you know, some of the, the, avoid the plastic. Uh, mass production things like McDonald's and Burger King and mm -hmm. so on, they've actually evolved away from using styrofoam packaging. Right. Yeah, styrofoam is and, a plastic. And go back to cardboard, go back to paper. And in Europe, they have, and in Mexico, they usually have their, their sodas right. in, in uh, bottles and they recycle them. Right. So, so you see the old Coke bottles that we used to have. Yeah. And the reason there is that that the um, aluminum that we put our sodas in is eroded by by this the, well, acid, the acid in, in it, the soda. Right. and then we get aluminum poisoning, which is a heavy metal, which makes us have Alzheimer's and dementia. So it wouldn't just be soda; it'd be beer as well. Yes, beer, soda, anything in a can that has preservatives and has. Um, and has a pH that's acidic, mm -hmm. it, it it takes some of that container with it. So so we thought we'd raise this as an issue just to give you one more thing to worry about. Yeah. No, but or one more thing to avoid. I mean, many times all you have to do is change what you buy and right. how it's packaged. How it's packaged. And have you, how you cook it. I mean, just use dishes. Which is, well, and that's the whole issue about the organic movement. You know, instead of eating prepackaged, frozen, prepared, fast food, fast consumable items, you can be a lot healthier if you eat the old way. You buy right. fresh foods, you buy green foods, you prepare them, and you put them in glass dishes mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to on a plastic plate or eat with a plastic fork or put it in saran wrap or glad wrap or whatever brand name you might use mm -hmm. that's plastic. Let me say one more thing about water bottles. Uh. They have, knowing this, the companies that bottle water right. have changed the plastic, that, and you'll notice that they're fr more fragile. Right. And uh, that you can kind of dent them in a but little bit more. that's for recycling. It's not just for that. It's for it's decreasing for EDCs. EDCs. Okay. So, I did not know so they have. They're aware of this. Yeah. It is. It is an endocrinologist kind of um, 
danger. You know, that they know about this danger more than any other specialty. And but they have been heard. Yes. And I don't know okay. exactly how they've been heard, but I know that the water bottle industry has changed that. Otherwise, I would feel really bad about drinking out of a water bottle. Sure. I don't need more. Well, you want to set a good example. I mean, I take estrogen, yeah. but I don't need that kind of estrogen because mm-hmm. it turns on all kinds of cells you don't want, including breast cancer cells. So we don't want more plastics in our life or more aluminum. And But I don't think we're any worse there. Our parents ate tin and cans of things that were tin. Yeah. Tin is not a good uh, metal to have in your body either. So they had some of that and they had, and they had lead in a lot of things like paint sure, and sure. Pi- and pipes. So they had their own problem. This is our problem. And the next generation has even more because they have what we gave them by birthing them. The mother, mothers usually it's yeah. uh, what's in our fat is, is all of the, um, toxins. So we tr- we take that from our fat yeah. to the baby. Yeah. Then the baby contains more than we did when we were born. Okay. It's an ongoing problem, and it's one that you're going to hear more about. But it's one you should be aware of, at least, Yes. Uh, to choose your food in the right container and to cook properly. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.